Welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. I'm just going to uh, do a quick, just want to do a quick audio test. If you can hear me and you can see the tick mill welcome screen, type a Y in the chat box. That's, uh, that'll be really helpful. Testing audio, testing audio, one, two, three. Good stuff. Okay, let's get going here then. Um, before we do, obviously, jump into today's uh, content. We, uh, as always, want to uh, adhere to the risk disclaimer. It's uh, incredibly important that, understand that the views expressed by me here today are, are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Titmill UK or Titmill Europe Limited. Just pull the file here, one second guys, bear with me. Uh, just give me one second here while I get... Uh, I'm having a problem connecting that there with me. Okay, that's sorted now. Sorry about this, guys. A little technical glitch there. Um, yeah, so the views expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, I'm going to run through a bunch of charts in a, in a few minutes. Um, if you have any questions, uh, if you can just wait till the end of the presentation, make a note of any questions you've got, and then I will be more than happy to open up for a Q&A. If there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my deck, uh, I can do that then as well. Um, so before we jump into the charts, a uh, brief introduction to myself for those that are here for the first time. Uh, my name is Patrick Manley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exited a consulting startup that was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, oftentimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my passion for markets uh, with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, <coughs> I began to essentially average down into uh, losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months, uh, to two years was the period during which I upped not just my technical game, I researched, developed, extensively back and forward tested uh, strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which uh, was underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. <clears throat> but most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. 
My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in some other uh, market activities and projects really. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, providing an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for two or three markets that I'm actively tracking. I also run uh, Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group, where I provide a daily specific trade plan uh, with intraday trade updates. Since its inception in April, I've delivered over 850 points of uh, alpha or upside. Uh, my other passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you want to get into a number, uh, you can find out more about what it is we offer at uh, FX Career Swap. And you can also uh, email the guys that, on the trade desk in London and they'll come back to you in a timely fashion with uh, with details. Most recently, I've been involved in developing the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, which is a professional trading community where traders of all experience levels can access daily institutional insights from tier one investment bank trading desks and their market strategy teams. There are regular market bulletins with in-depth positioning and sentiment analysis, uh, actionable real-time chart analysis with daily setups and trading updates from a team of expert traders with live trader education sessions, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a pro. And um, for both of those strategy groups, the, uh, the Futures and Options Group, we are offering a two week free trial period. I will put the link into the chat here so you can request access to the uh, Facebook group. Uh, similarly, we're doing the same thing with the Trader Blueprint. You can get a two-week free trial. Uh, link is now going into the chat there. Uh, so strongly suggest you take advantage of those and, uh, and see what it is we're doing. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into the charts. And we are going to start with the S&P 500. Um, I've got an Elliott Wave overlay here uh, for the S&P. And uh, we're reaching some pretty pivotal areas, obviously, uh, summer trading at the moment, but um, my sense is we're going to uh, emerge from this summer trading into some decent uh, two-way volatility. And the first port of call for me, uh, this is, you can see a little bit clearer here on the four-hour chart. This is the, the summer trading range we're in at the moment. And what I'm looking for uh, is going to be a break of the, um, of the resistance here. Uh, through 44.35, which should see prices extend up into um, this uh, ascending trend line resistance in what is ultimately a, a megaphone or a broadening top pattern. So I'm looking for price to extend up. Maybe we get a little retest there, but ultimately get into uh, this trend line resistance. So somewhere around 44.88, uh, we've got 44.92. One six one extension of this potential wave four corrective pattern. So what I'm looking for is an extension up into this zone, um, not going long, uh, looking for that trade, and then ultimately looking to reverse uh, the long positions based on um, based on bearish reversal patterns from this target zone. And then from there, if we jump back out to the, uh, the daily chart. What I'd then be looking for is a pullback to the, uh, the wave four low, which would have us back into this uh, prior resistance has acted as support once. We likely get a second test here. So back down then into 42, uh, 44 would be the target zone before we extend into uh, the wave five of five, 
Uh, this being, if we look at the subdivision here, off, this is off the pandemic lows. So we have a nice one, two, three, four, five, then a, an ABC correction, setting up wave one, two, the internal three, four, five, which then complete, uh, this completed the major wave one and two. And we've been in uh, a, a couple of interim, in, in intermediate cycles, sorry. Uh, but ultimately now I'm looking for the major wave five high to be put in. Uh, and that should, uh, depending upon how this wave four structure plays out, should see us up into the uh, 4,600, maybe a little bit higher. Um, but from there, then we'll be looking for the major uh, correction of uh, of this uh, of this wave five peak, um, and certainly we can be thinking about a move back down into the 700 area for uh, a reasonable expectation. But the immediate focus for me is looking. Is watching for entries on the long side to target this uh, 4480 to 4490 area, and then watching to see if we get that confirmation uh, to set short positions. Obviously, August, like I've mentioned before, uh, summer, summer lull, less part participation. You can see quite, some quite erratic moves, but uh, what we're anticipating is that we do get this break to the top side. And then we get the opportunity to see if, uh, if the bears can get a bit of a pullback here. Um, equally, to the downside, if we break the support zone here coming in at 4370, then that would suggest we have a consolidation top in place and we can start to think about a correction uh, down to that 4237 initial target zone. Um, so that would be the alternative scenario, but the primary setup that I see at the moment is that we, uh, we take out the stops above this uh, range. If we do break down, we will be looking or set up probably something like this and then get that move into the uh the support zone there but like i say primary setup at this juncture uh given the structure that we've got looks like we uh we take out the stops at the top side and get that pivotal uh 4480 4490 test uh before lower so similar scenario in terms of the dax let's take this out to the daily time frame so I'm uh, sorry, the, uh, the NASDAQ, <coughs> looking for another high here in the NASDAQ, up into this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance. So we look for a break higher here to get up into this zone, which is the, it's now moved up um, uh, 15,420 area. And that's uh, where we watch for those bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. And certainly I think we can think about a retest of this uh, prior resistance then to act as support at 14,000 and then potentially the trend line support below so watching for uh, for a break here to the upside um the Dow there we go so similar story in the Dow we're looking for a test a uh, retest the, the Dow actually took out its uh, ascending trend line support first and we're now grinding up against it so any move up here into this uh, 35,600 area, I watch for short, uh, for sorry, for bearish reversal patterns at short positions. And I think we definitely think about a move back down into uh, 32,600 before we extend into that major fifth wave uh, target zone um, to the upside. And uh, ideally, we get that so we, we get that run up uh, coming into October. Uh, which seasonally is one of the weakest periods for the, uh, the equity markets. And then we get the, the correction before we potentially set up for a run uh, into the year end to the upside. So we've got the DAX here. DAX, I'm looking for uh, one more high in the DAX. So ideally, we're going to see something like this develop. And then we're into the top side of the major ascending wedge. And, uh, and then we can think about a decent correction developing in the DAX. So uh, the le key levels to watch, <clears throat> you can see that we've got this wedge from the pandemic lows, it's respect to the trend line. Um, but I think the next time we get down to test it, we'll be taking it out. And so watching any move up into uh, 16,600 should give a decent shorting opportunity. We've got some nice momentum divergence in play. Uh, so keeping an eye on the DAX. Nikkei remains the weakest of all these equity indexes, and I'm still, uh, I still believe that we have, uh, we're going to test lower. So any move up into this trend line resistance at the 28,200 zone, watch various reversal patterns there, and I'd be, I'm targeting 
um, an equality objective uh, down to 25,900 for the Nikkei. I think that's going to be uh, one of the uh, one of the most interesting plays. I'm keeping an eye on this, looking for uh, to see if we get an, a setup as we trade into this area. Equally with the Nikkei, the other way to play this is you can play a break of this internal trend line there. So any move now down through uh, 27,300 uh, should also give the same play heading down into the, uh, sorry, not 20,000, uh, 27,300, uh, sets up that move down to 25,900 on, uh, on a breakdown there. Uh, the VIX. Obviously, if we if we if we're looking if we're thinking about new equity highs, we should see the VIX trading back down into the uh, into the channel here at forty but below the fifteen level. Uh, we are tracking quite nicely this overlay versus this price action here before we expect extended. So if we continue to chop here, then uh, then certainly what I would be do what I'll be doing is as we if we don't get a lower VIX and we get new equity highs, that will suggest that we, are, we that people are acquiring uh, risk protection and then we can see a real pop in terms of the VIX on any pullback. So uh, VIX to be bought above 2050 and below 15 is the, uh, is the way I'm gonna be playing the VIX as we, uh, as we head into the back end of the summer here. Dollar index. <laughs> Held, held the, uh, the trend line, the projected trend line support. If now we need to get through uh, the monthly pivot here at uh, 92.35 to set up that extension into the target zone. Um, and again, if we, if we lose this trend line support here, um, then we look for a test uh, back down into the 91 handle. That's going to be pivotal. Because if we take out the 91, then we can, it, it will suggest or give a strong indication that uh, we're resuming the downtrend uh, somewhat uh, prematurely. I personally, from a structural perspective, would prefer to see this zone tested and then see if the sellers are, uh, are back in play there. And then we can, once the pattern has, has completed, the technical pattern has completed, then that will allow for uh, the final leg to the downside for this cycle. Um, but holding uh, pretty well here, this, uh, this internal trend line versus the pitchfork overlay. 10 year yields, obviously, Big story, big market driver at the moment, the, uh, the yield narrative uh, with uh, bonds being bought, uh, yields on the defensive here, but we're still holding this trend line as we do. I still think there's a chance of a pop and one more low into the major ascending trend line support uh, before we get the next leg to the upside in terms of yields. And you can see, so obviously this is, uh, this is the German 10 year Bund and so uh, you can see money flying into this now. We can start to track here, I think. Uh, we, no, we haven't got any divergence yet. Once we get some divergence, I'll, uh, I'll update this chart. I'll, I'll probably do it as a, uh, uh, a, a chart it. Um, but once we get some divergence, I'll show you here how you can construct or identify what, uh, where we can play a potential wave four low for a fifth wave extension. Uh, let me just move this here. So what we'd be looking for ideally will be this type of move. <clears throat> and then we get the wave five equality objective versus the wave one high. So what you do, or, or, or a nice way of tracking this, we probably look I think we could probably look at getting into this resistance zone up here around 177.48. And then what we do is we bring in our overlay versus the last corrective phase. And so let's say we get up in here or we stall out the weekly range resistance. So then what we can think about is this being a potential wave for low. And then we get our fifth wave target once, uh, once we have our our fourth wave low in place, and that gives us an objective to the upside there, 178.58. So I'll track this one again. What I what we what we want to think about is in terms of uh, the pullback. Whilst we don't have any divergence, that would suggest that it's simply a wave three high, and so there is still that wave four a high. To, uh, sorry, there's still that wave five objective to play for. Um, versus once we can identify a potential wave four low in place, and so um, so this this is. 
this is a, a useful tool when you're thinking about where we are in terms of the wave cycle using divergence. So whilst we don't have any divergence, then the, uh, the higher probability scenario is we simply have a wave three high in place, and then we can look for a wave four low to play for the wave five. And it's the wave five then that should give us the divergence on the momentum uh, indicator to, uh, to play then for a deeper correction. But certainly this looks very impulsive at the moment. And we know from a, a broader perspective that, uh, that money is flying into the bond market. Uh, bonds globally are being, uh, are being bid at the moment. On, uh, on risk sentiment. So that's uh, that's just a little uh, tip there in terms of how you can structure and identify where, you, where these wave cycles are likely to play out into. Uh, gold, <coughs> looking for gold now to pull back into the target zone here of, uh, of this trend line support. We, uh, we, look, we can overlay an equal legs here. So we So we've got a nice uh, 117.87 is the target zone now. Um, and this, we've got this ascending trend line support. So any move into here, I've been looking for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions, and then targeting a move up into the quality objective at 118.66 uh, and that major ascending trend line resistance coming in there as well. So that'd be a nice target from an entry uh, into this 117.80 area. Silver, uh, weaker. Than, uh, than gold at the moment. I'm looking to uh, to get short here on a break of 25.20, and I'm targeting the equality objective down to 23.30. Uh, we've got the yearly pivot there as well, uh, 22.65. So nice risk reward using a stop just above the high of that uh, reversal candle there from the underside of the previous trend line support. Uh, I like that trade at the moment. Crude, I'm looking for a test here of this major ascending trend line support um, off the lows there, the pandemic lows will be the third test. These generally give a nice entry uh, to join the trend. So any move into this $66 area is, uh, is one I'm gonna be watching closely to set long positions. Think, and certainly we can think then about a target of the ascending trend line resistance, which comes at $85. So that's one that's uh, very much on the radar at the moment. Copper. Similar type of story, looking for a test this major ascending trend line support with this big broadening uh, top pattern. This should give us a, a potential wave four low in place. And uh, we should be playing for a fifth wave extension up into, uh, up into the high the ascending trend line resistance, 553.89 on the upside will be the objective. So keep close eye on that one there. That is reversal from that trend line support. Bitcoin, uh, so we had, uh, we had the long signal uh, through the descending trend line resistance, traded right into the range resistance, and we found uh, a bit of supply here now. Now we'll see what, uh, what, sort of, uh, what sort of move we're actually going to get. Do we trade back down into range support, or do we hold these prior highs here, uh, previous range resistance, uh, 36,000? If we do, then that could set up an extension up into the 50,000 area. Um, Similar story with Ether, Ether not quite as strong as, um, as Bitcoin. Uh, we, we have, we've fallen shy of the range resistance. So we're looking for a test of 29.14 in Ether, maybe get a bit of consolidation here, but that's the target. And then we'll see uh, if, the, uh, if sellers step in. Dollar Yuan, uh, looking for a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario here to, uh, to set up. Let's draw that in for you. So we've got shoulder. And we've got our head here. And now we are trying to um, potentially carve out the right shoulder, which, uh, which should then give us the, uh, the fuel for another run to the upside in, uh, in terms of the dollar yuan. Dollar yen. Looking for certainly while we hold, let's just draw this in using this tool. So, whilst we hold this uh, trend line resistance, we look for 108.58, and that then should set up a, uh, a relatively decent opportunity on the long side. Certainly, can think about a move back in to retest the, uh, the 111 handle, but uh, just watching for that 108.58, we've got weekly range support 108.40. So, watching for bullish reversal patterns there to then play to the top side of the current range. 
Swissy talked about this last week about this like market mirroring type effect. I think we're in for, uh, I think we're just gr grinding it out here in terms of the Swissy. No immediate uh, opportunity to, uh, to highlight there. I like uh, the dollar CAD here on the test of this uh, trend line support, potential again inverse head and shoulder scenario. Uh, so we move down to uh, this 124.10, 124.20 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there, and uh, and we could see uh, we could see a decent clip to the upside. Equally, though, if we take out this trend line support, then that would suggest we're actually starting a potential next leg to the downside for the moon. Because uh, critically, what's important here is we held an equality objective at 127.38. So technically, that's. Uh, that's sufficient for an ABC pattern to have completed. And certainly if we take out the, the confirmation really for me would be uh, through 122.50 there, the uh, B wave low uh, would suggest we're gonna take out the lows and move down for, uh, for a new low in the dollar CAD. But first and foremost, let's see if we get some, uh, some bullish reversal patterns from this area to set up another leg to the upside and what could be then uh, a com more complex correction for, uh, for the Lumi. Sing dollar, looking for another leg, uh, another corrective wave to develop here before there's, we could see some potential in the sing dollar if we get down into the um, lower parallel there of the uh, pitchfork, which it's tracking against pretty nicely at the moment. So uh, if we can get uh, another leg to the downside, I'd be very interested to see how we trade at 133.70s for the sing dollar. Euro, trying to hold on here, hold on to the pivot cluster. Um, as we do, then I still see the potential for another leg uh, to the upside. But again, I would anticipate that we, uh, we find sellers into that 120 because we have that open quality objective down at 116.30. Similar, with, obviously, with the dollar index, with its uh, quality objective. I really like to see those get tested. Uh, to complete the, the technical structure at this point. Uh, Euro Swissy is one that I'm watching closely here. I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns in this 107 area to, uh, to set long positions. I think we can, uh, we can with, with this, uh, with, with these, when you're playing these corrections, one, uh, one tip to bear in mind is if you get a signal where you're playing these ABCs, you want your trade to be risk-free by the time you trade halfway back into the C wave um, retracement, because that's, that's the area. If, if we are gonna do another leg uh, to the downside in terms of double correction, that's the area, the technical area where sellers are likely to start to step back in. So we wanna be risk-free if we're gonna play these corrective moves um, by the time we test the 50% retracement of our C wave, just a little uh, point to bear in mind. Euro sterling sitting right on the edge here. Um, I think we, uh, what I'd like to see is uh, a, another leg down here to complete this uh, five wave sequence of these, um, of these highs here. And then I think we can start to think, uh, so we have one, two, three, four, and a protracted fifth wave down into the 84 handle, monthly range support, the 127 extension of our wave four consolidation. And I think that's where we can see buyers uh, come in to defend uh, Euro sterling. But uh, for now, we wait for the break uh, to the downside. Um, the last one, I'm just running out of time here. Uh, Sterling Kiwi is one that I'm paying attention to. I think this one is offering potentially fantastic risk reward for a decent uh, position trade. So I'm looking for a test here of the uh, 195.80 this trend line support, watch for bullish reversal patterns there because we have a big top side objective to play for in terms of this structure here. That will give us a target up at 204.52 from, uh, from an entry down here at 196. So I'll leave you with that one uh, for this week. That's one that I'm gonna be paying close attention to. Obviously a bunch of others that I highlighted, paying close attention to these equity markets as we look for this uh, potential fifth wave extension before we can uh, we can think about trading a, a decent uh, decent corrective move 
so that's uh, that wraps up uh, most of the charts that I'm looking at. There are some others. I'll uh, I'll update those in the uh, in the chart. It's uh, so with that. Are there any questions? You can either um, type them into the chat box. No problem at all, Amy. Uh, yeah, Kiwi Yen is is one that I'm actually watching. Just didn't get time here. So I like the Kiwi Yen into this resistance area here, 77.90. Uh, bearish reversal patterns there, and th this Kiwi Yen has uh, as a downside, has a structure to complete versus um, this swing structure here. So I'd like uh, I like the Kiwi Yen into the 77.90 bearish reversal patterns, short positions targeting 74.86 to complete the wave four low, and then we can start to think about the upside again. Does that make sense, Amy? Okay, any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, as uh, Ben has just done, uh, an N in the chat box, are you using FIB retracements extensions? Yeah, I, I use FIB retracements uh, extensions. I use FIB uh, time extensions. Um, I use a, a, a bunch of tools, uh, Ruth. Uh, you know, in terms of trading, it's a bit like, uh, you know, if you're a plumber, for example, um, and you go to the job, uh, you, you know, you have the core understanding of the rudiments of plumbing, but you use different tools uh, depending upon the, the job you're, you're doing. So um, I kind of think of trading like that in, uh, in some sense that I have a broad, I have an understanding of, uh, sorry, a deep understanding of the few tools and I use them uh, as I see, as I see, as I see applicable really. Uh, Q&A, what, uh, what indicators? Um, these are, uh, the indicators for price uh, are proprietary. I can give you a link where you can access those if you're interested, bear with me. Uh, type answer to James. There we go, James. You can access uh, the indicators set through uh, through that firm there. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Take the silence as a no, and I'll wrap this one up here. Uh, I would just mention to you, I'm going to be offline uh, from August 21st through to September 1st, so there won't be any uh, sessions during uh, during that period. And I'll be back September 1st, raring to go into the business end of the year. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Hope this helps.